Hello everyone. Today I will discuss the basics for completing a linear programming model using the Excel Solver add-in. This video focuses on how to set up and complete an optimal solution for a company with limited resources. For this video I use the Galaxy Industries example from the book Applied Management Science by Lawrence and Pasternak. This first video in the two-part set focuses on the best technique to set up word problems and identify the variables critical to the solution. The second video focuses on entering the objective function and the constraints into Excel and using the solver add-in to optimize profits. To begin with, there is a specific way you should address all word problems. First, read the entire problem. Too often decision makers read portions of a problem and then jump to solve it without taking all of the information into account. Next, list what you know. These are called the knowns and help you to determine the process or the equation you need to use to solve the problem. After you list the knowns, list the unknowns. These are the items you want to solve for. Many times the unknowns are followed by a question mark. That makes them a bit obvious, but in many cases there may not be a question or a question mark and it may be information you need to uncover from the data you get or your personal experience in the industry. Now you have enough to determine the equation or process to solve the problem and finally you solve for the unknown variable. Let's take an example. For instance, let's say you need to solve a problem where a plus b equals c. It's a fairly simple equation but after reading the entire problem you look for the knowns in step two. Say they give you the knowns in the problem they give you b is equal to 5 and a is equal to 6. For step 3 they ask you what is the value of c. You then know that you've got to use that equation a plus b equals c. Once you have what you know, what you need to know and the equation, the solution is fairly simple. We substitute 5 for b in the equation, 6 for a in the equation, 6 plus 5 equals c, 6 plus 5 equals 11. All right. Let's apply this method and the linear programming solution to the Galaxy Industries problem. First step, read the entire problem. Here's the first two paragraphs concerning Galaxy Industries issue. Go ahead and take a moment to read both paragraphs. Now the first reading you've got is just a cursory reading. Don't try to extract anything. Just get a general feeling for what they're asking you in the problem. Here's the third and final paragraphs reviewing the problem for Galaxy, Mar uh, Galaxy Industries. And then finally they give you a table with some more information. So you can probably see how easy it is to be overwhelmed by a word problem. But using that elephant metaphor on how you eat an elephant, let's take this problem one bite at a time. So the first step after we read the problem to get an understanding of what they're looking for is to identify the knowns. Now from the first paragraph, there's a lot of good information about the company but not much we can use for the optimization problem we need to solve. When we get to the second paragraph, we now know there are two models of the toy, the space ray and the zapper. We notice that they're produced in one lots of one dozen each. They're made from a special plastic of which we only have a thousand pounds of the plastic available each week 
and only 40 hours of production time available each week. A good technique is to write down the knowns as you find them during your second detailed reading of the problem. So there we go. We've got lot size of one dozen, a limit of 1,000 pounds of special plastic per week, and a limit of 40 hours of production time per week. Going back to the last two paragraphs of the problem, we see there's a little bit more about the company, but then we get down to where there's information we can use. They've already agreed to limit total weekly production to, at most, 700 dozen units, and they don't want weekly production of the space rays to exceed that of the zappers by more than 350 dozen. Then looking at the table, we notice that it tells us that the space rays profit per dozen is eight dollars, the zapper five dollars profit per dozen. It takes two pounds of plastic per dozen to make the space ray, one pound of plastic per dozen to produce the zapper. It takes three minutes per dozen for the space to make the space ray and four minutes per dozen to make the zapper. Adding to our knowns, we add lot size one dozen, limit 1,000 pounds, limit 40 hours. Then we add the production is less than or equal to 700 dozen units and the space ray minus the zapper difference is less than 350 dozen units. And then from the table, we have the information on profit, plastic used per dozen, and the production time. On to step three, we identify the unknowns. Although it's not clearly stated in the problem, we can infer that Galaxy Industries wants to maximize profits while meeting the manufacturing constraints they already approved. As we determine the equation of the process, since it's a maximize problem, that tells us we need to design a linear programming model maximizing the total weekly profit. And we're going to use Excel Solver as a software to help us do this. Now, if you haven't got the solver or already the add-in already activated for your Excel, there's a video that tells you specifically how to do that. You want to do that before you get into the calculation process. This is where we get where many decision makers have a problem with step five because they're not proficient in identifying the variables and constraints. They deal more in vague broad brush definitions of critical variables rather than concise quantifiable measurable metrics. I strongly recommend you complete each step of the linear programming process no matter how simple it may seem. Skipping steps can cause you to arrive at the wrong answer. Now based on the reading of the problem and the knowns that we identified, there are two critical variables we need to consider as we look at this particular problem. We want to maximize profit. That means we've got to look at how much profit we're going to make for each of the space rays and the zappers. And since we know that we've got $8 of profit per space ray dozen and $5 per zapper dozen, the objection function then becomes to maximize 8 times the number of space rays plus 5 times the number of zappers. So it helps to identify variables in terms of the letter X so we're going to use x1 sub 1 as a space ray variable and x sub 2 as a zapper variable. Once we determine the objective function, we move to the constraints or limits to apply to the process. These comes from the knowns that we identified earlier. We look at the limitations and enter them into the frequency table we're going to use to solve the problem. Along with the identification of the critical variables, this is another important step that affects the answer you get. So we've got maximize 8x sub 1 plus 5x sub 2. This is the line we place at the top of the table as profit. 
and it's normally the overriding function we want to maximize. Max 8x sub 1 plus 5x sub 2. ST means subject to. These are the constraints. This and everything below them will be the constraints. In this case, the profit is subject to the constraints identified in the knowns. The space rate takes two pounds per dozen, and the zapper takes one pound. From that table, we know the amount of plastic, our profits cannot exceed the number, total number of space rays and zappers, and we only have a thousand pounds of the plastic. So it takes two pounds per space ray and one pound for the zapper per dozen. So it's two times x sub one plus one times x sub two has to be less than or equal to the thousand pounds. Total, together, the total plastic cannot exceed 1,000 pounds a week. Next, there's a time constraint. We had 40 hours to produce these models per week. But it takes three minutes, three, to produce a dozen space rays, three x sub one, and four minutes to produce a dozen zappers, four x sub two. We have 40 hours of production time, which is 2,400 minutes. 40 hours times 60 minutes per hour is 2,400. Now we need to keep all the measurements consistent. So if the constraint is in hours, the total time has to be in hours. But since the constraint is in minutes, the total time we have has to be in minutes. The next constraint they give us is a total number. We cannot have more than 700 dozen units per week. By convention, we do not normally show the number in front of the x when it's equal to 1, but I include it because it transfers nicely to the table in Excel. The next constraint has to do with the mix we need to ma maintain. And you'll notice here that the sign is negative rather than positive because when we take the difference between the number dozen of the space rays x sub 1 and of the zappers x sub 2, the difference has to be less than or equal to 350 dozen units. The last constraint is more of an option we keep in mind when choosing items in the solver input data box. You can include this constraint in the problem if you wish, but when you choose the non-negative option in the solver's menu, options, it's already taken into account. I'll talk about this when we enter it into Excel. Now you'll notice that I place the identification for each constraint to the left of the equation. Profit, plastic, time, number, mix, so have you. You will see why when we enter the constraints into the Excel spreadsheet. So now we're going to move to the second video to set up the table in Excel so we can use Solver to find the optimum mix of these toys. If you follow the steps I've shown you, the problem will transfer nicely into the Excel spreadsheet. As always, if you have problems, contact your system administrator, your facilitator, or please feel free to send me contact or send me information or feedback at my email or on my website or here where you've watched the video. All right, on to the calculations then. See you in the next video.